you'll turn in your Bibles to the book of 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I'm going to read verses 1 through 7 once I get there. All right. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. And the Bible says, Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk, and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we give you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from forn fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles, which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. So here in 1 Thessalonians, Paul is telling the Thessalonians that basically we are called to sanctification. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today, um, is I'm going to talk about sanctification. So here we see God wants us to be sanctified, but what is, what does it mean to be sanctified? Well, I looked it up in the definition, well, there's two definitions. The first one is to be made holy. And obviously we cannot make ourselves holy. That, that part of sanctification is what God does. That's the work that God does through Jesus and his blood. Um, but the second part of sanctification is what we can do. Um, that is the act of consecration or setting apart for a sacred purpose. Now, we can't do this on our own, but with the help of the Spirit, He can help us to do this. Um, turn to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, and the Bible says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So he, here Peter is telling um, his audience uh, that they are four things. They are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a peculiar people. All those are their adjectives or descriptions basically saying that we are separate from the normal people. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's what sanctific being sanctified is, is being separate from what the rest of the world is. Yeah. Um, in 2 Corinthians, Paul talks about Paul tells them that we are supposed to be separate and touch not the unclean thing. So we know that our goal is to be sanctified, but how, how can we do that? Um, so I have two examples of people who were sanctified. Um, the first one is in Numbers. Numbers chapter 25. In Numbers chapter 25, the children of Israel, they're in the wilderness, and there's sin in the camp. Obviously, God is not happy at that, and he's getting rid of the sin with a plague. Um, I'll read verses 1 through 11, and it says, And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. 
And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people, and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his, every one his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses, and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand and went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. So here we have the children of Israel. Some of them have committed sin. And God tells Moses what he should do. Um, and Moses starts obeying. And the, some of the people of Israel start repenting. It says that they're at the... Um, that they're weeping at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So these people are sorry for their sin, but then this other man comes along and he's flaunting. He's flaunting his sin and um, I get the, the feeling from it that he's just like, I'm sinning, yeah, what are you gonna do about it? God doesn't, he can't do anything to me. And then we see Phineas the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, he took a javelin and he killed the man and that woman. So God obviously doesn't want us to go around killing people with javelins, but that is something that we need to do in our life. Um, here, Phineas, um, the camp of Israel had sin in it, just like how we can have sin in our life. We see that some of the children of Israel were repenting, just like we can repent, but if we're not all repenting, if all of us isn't repented, um, then that's going to be a problem. Yeah. Because like um, the children of Israel, if part of them were repented but part of them weren't, um, God couldn't use them in the same way as if they were all repented. We see throughout the Old Testament that whenever there was sin, they would begin to lose battles or um, they would get taken over. And that's just like in our life. If we have our good side, but then we also have some sin over here, um, we aren't going to win the spiritual battles and um, it's going to take a toll on what God can do through us. So we can be like Phineas in that we can aggressively get rid of the sin that's in our life. Um, and, not just, and what I mean by aggressively is that we shouldn't confess our sin and then just be like, sorry God, and tomorrow I'm going to plan on doing the same thing again. Right. We need to get rid of it and plan that we never do it that's again. Right. So the first example is Phineas. The second example is Daniel. So if you turn to the book of Daniel, <clears throat> Daniel chapter 1, Daniel chapter 1, and I'll read verses 1 through 14. And the Bible says, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his, hand, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God and brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace 
and whom they might teach the learning in the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So here we have Daniel. He was presented with an opportunity to go against what he knew was right, yet he had purposed in his heart. He determined that he would be separate from what the others were doing, but that he, he would obey God in what he had for him to do. Um, now, like Daniel, we alone, our determination will not keep us from sin. We can determine not to sin all we want, but it won't help us. Um, but in Daniel, with, or with Daniel, we know that he had a strong prayer life. Um, later in the book of Daniel, it talks about he would, how he would pray three times a day. And that's where Daniel um, got his strength. When, when we're walking in the Spirit and we're praying and we're reading God's Word, He can put power behind our determination. Um, so this is the second part of being um, separate is not only do we have to aggressively get rid of the sin that's in our life, but determine that with the help of the Holy Spirit, by walking in the Spirit, that we will refrain from sin and um, so that we can go forward for God. So as I close, um, the question is, or which one of these people are we? Either we need to get rid of sin and be aggressive and get rid of that sin that's in our life already, or we need to continue to be on guard against sin that's coming at us right now or coming at us soon. Um, so we ought to just pray and have God show us which one of those we are and then obey him as he uh, tells us what to do. So with that, I will close and hand it back to Pastor.